Welcome to Robotics Explained, what hopefully will become a series covering some of the topics going on in the wide world of robotics. Now, because all the things that you can know about robots is extremely huge, we have to start somewhere. So I think it would make sense to start off with talking about the different terminologies that we use when talking about robotics. First up, we have to agree on what even is a robot, because there's actually multiple different definitions for it depending on where you read. Even the Oxford English Dictionary has two different kinds of definitions for it depending on the situation. But one we can go with is from the Robotic Industries Association, RIA, which defines a robot as A robot is a reprogrammable, multifunctional manipulator designed to move materials, parts, tools or specialized devices through variable programmed motions for the performance of various tasks. And the right way I interpret this is that it is able to be programmed and able to interact with the world. Knowing that, we can roughly sort our robots into three different categories. We have our mobile robots, which are robots like Mia or Spot from Boston Dynamics, which are able to move around in their environment. We have industrial robots, like Yua from the Universal Robots, that are able to, in a stationary position, affect their environment. And we have humanoids, robots like that thing Tesla is making that attempts to mimic human behavior. There are actually way more categories we can sort robots into, but before we can talk about that, we need to talk about some theory behind it first. So let's look at this robot. As you can see, there are a lot of things going on and I think we'll take them one at a time. First of all, this robot has is an arm that is attached to what we call the base. And from the base, there is what we call a joint. Now, in robotics, there are two types of joints. There are what we call prismatic joints, which is able to move along an axis, and there are revolute joints, which are able to rotate around an axis. There are naturally more types of joints, like for example, the ball joint that exists in your shoulder as well. But most of these joints are just variations of these two. Example, the ball, ball joint is just two revolute joints, one in one axis and one in another axis. It is through these joints that we're able to control the robot. And as you can see, this robot actually has multiple joints. And when we're able to control the robot through these joints, it's called a serial robot. A robot will be called actuated if we're able to control all of the joints, or it will be called underactuated if we're only able to control some of the joints. The area between the joints we call links. And as you can see with this robot, for the end of it, it has a gripper but it could might as well just have a screwdriver or a drill or something like that. Could essentially be anything. But as long as it's able to manipulate this environment, we would call this a manipulator. And an important thing to understand here is that if you look at the very, very tip, in this case of the gripper, again, could be a screwdriver, at the very tip, that position, we would call a tool center point or TCP. And a lot of robotics deals with how to manipulate or move the TCP to certain areas because that is most likely what we're interested in. If, for example, you create a program that manipulates each of the joints individually in order to move the TCP to a certain position, that would be called forward kinematics. But if instead you create a system where knowing where the TCP is, you calculate each of the necessary joint information, that's called inverse kinematics. This is likely what we're going to cover in the next episode. Now, I am actually switching a bit between regular robotics definitions and kinematic definitions, but I do feel that these two are so tightly integrated that it just makes sense to cover them here together. But now, let's talk about the Cartesian coordinate system. It is very likely that you at least at some point have seen this, either from school or Minecraft or somewhere else, but we'll still cover it. The idea is, we can use three numbers, or three axes, x, y, and z, to describe a position in space. So let's say something exists, in this coordinate system at this point right here, well, then we would say it has a position x, y, and z. But another thing we can do is to describe an orientation. Uh, future me, remember to animate something right here. <laughs> As you can see, this is orientated in a way where it points somewhat downwards. And let's say we want to describe that it's orientated in this direction. Okay, how do we do this? Well, what we 
can do is that we can take the Cartesian coordinate system and rotate around each axis. We would describe this with an angle to x, for example, if we rotate around the x-axis, an angle to z, and so on. So imagine the whole coordinate system is placed in this figure. Well, then we can use both our three positions and our three angles to describe the orientation and position of this object. The combination of these two things are, is called a frame. But why is this important? Well, for a number of reasons. If we take the row from before and we take the TCP, let's say we want to move from one position to another position. First of all, we would do that using the Cartesian coordinate system, saying we have a coordinate A, the coordinate B, we want to move from A to B. Moving the position from A to B is called a translation. Moving the rotation from A to B is called a rotation. And doing both is called a transformation. This is also important because whenever we talk about robotics, we talk about how many degrees of freedom it has access to. What does that mean? Essentially, it means how much of the Cartesian coordinate system is the robot able to use. So as we talked about the, in the Cartesian coordinate system, we have three coordinates and we have three rotations. How many of those are the robot able to use? Let's take this robot. It is only able to rotate around one axis because it only has one ribbon joint. Which means it has only able to one of the rotation factors and nothing else. With that said, it has only access to one degree of freedom. If we expand that with an extra joint, you can see now it's able to move in the x and y plane. So now it has two degrees of freedom. And that goes up with a maximum of being six. If you have more than six joints, you could technically say you, for example, have seven. And the more of those you have, doesn't grant you access to more of the Cartesian coordinate system, but it grants you access to more opportunities, more solutions to find a certain position. We call that redundancy. So for example, if you hear someone say, this is a redundant robot, it means it has more than six degrees of freedom. There are definitely way more we could talk about, but in order to avoid this video becoming too bloated, I think it would make sense to stop here. How many of these episodes I make definitely will depend on how lazy I am. <laughs> But I hope you'll follow along. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.